this week, major division top seven. Week number five, we have teams dropping out this week in terms of the poll rankings. Uh, dropping out this week of Prairie View and m Panthers, two and three, two and one overall as they had a tough loss in the State Fair Classic. Also dropping out this week is Morgan State Bears, uh, one and three this week. Getting to those receiving votes, uh, just those three teams outside of the top ten will give you those. With Howard Bison, two and two on the season. Uh, if you notice, uh, they are just outside, hadn't played a conference game, 164 points. Prairie View with their tough loss, they're still outside of the top seven, but they're still receiving votes in terms of the top ten. Prairie View and the Panthers sit at two and three. Two and one with 150 points. Uh, also outside of the top seven, if you would, are the Alcorn State Braves. They got a big overtime win, field goal there. Uh, on the road, uh, the Braves, Alcorn State Braves, two and three, one and one on the season, are getting it done. Those are the teams receiving votes just outside of the top seven. Let me get your top seven here. You see that with Howard. Bison, Prairie View, and Alcorn State. Getting in the top seven, two teams jump back in. The first one being number seven, Alabama a and Bulldogs sitting at three and two, one and one, 174 points. They were not ranked back in the mix at number six. Southern Jaguars, two and two. They were open last weekend, but they have a big matchup this week with the top ranked team. We'll tell you what that looks like shortly. Two and oh on the conference. At 184, not ranked last weekend, but up at the top of the conference with Grambling, sitting at 2-0 and in the Western Division. Bringing us to number five, none other than those Grambling State Tigers, 3-2, and 2-0. I know it's early talk, but the Bayou Classic folks, they get a little excited. <laughs> <laughs> it starts being mixed. They are already talking about we back in the business again about the last 187 points. Moving up two spots, Grambling State ties X the Demons of the Panthers, who had won five straight games. Grambling State says they're in the mix and they're ready to get it on. We'll see. It's a long season out there. Bringing us to number four, Jackson State Tigers sit at three and two, one and one. Uh, they move up a slot, even though they didn't play because of some other teams dropping out of the top five. 195 points total gets them at number four. Bringing us to number three, the Hampton Pirates, three and one. 1-0 in the conference race. Check this out. Two first place votes, 219 points. They were previous ranked four. They're moving up to number three. So that means three people have ranked the Hampton Prize number one in their poll ranking. I want to mm. mm. At number two, North Carolina Central Eagles sit at 4-1. Had a huge come from behind win, getting it done in overtime. They lose a first place vote, maybe because of that game there. They're sitting at five first place votes, 243 points, but they still remain at number two. Bring us to number one. The Florida and them rather sit at four and one, three and oh. in the conference race. They also lost the first place vote, 244 points, if you would. They remain number one. Charles, since Brian's out here striking and just getting all excited, I'm going to go to you first. We're going to let him rest, take his time, and we just too much enjoying the fact that the FAMU Rattles are number one. We Charles, said, what are your thoughts on the topic? The FAMU Rattles are number one after this past weekend against Valley? Wait just a second. Davis Richard done put on his Superman cape and the MEAC play of the week, and we can't reward him with the number one ranking? What? What is this? Wow. Okay, Doc. Well, all right. Well, it's just it's just a point difference. They tied the first place in votes. It's really cold. I know, but when the fans look at it, they see family on top of North Carolina <laughs> Central. You know, the look fighting at the, just, Look at the, the producers. They making the, sure that you know that family is number one. <laughs> the, the, the fighting Joshes will not like this whatsoever. So, uh, I tell you what. <laughs> But uh, you know what? Uh, kudos to and and watch this. I said this. Grandma doesn't stay that out for very long. Watch, watch, watch Grandma uh, yeah. through through the course of of this season. Uh, very impressed with them this past weekend. Uh, this is a team 
Uh, they are salty on defense. They got a pass for Sunday out of Anderson. They got great, competent uh, a quarterback play out of Miles Crawley. They're getting more out of him than I expect from Miles Crawley. And then they can run the football. And th- these things kind of snowball. A win like that last week over Prairie View, which is a good football team, uh, they they effectively held Prairie View's rushing attack under 100 yards. Prairie View got a huge 54-yard run from um, from Connor Wishon. Uh, that, that really tipped them over 100 yards. But they did a great job of controlling Prairie View's run game last week. So that's a team to kind of keep an eye on. This is a huge game this weekend in Lorman. Oh, my goodness. That, the, a, a homecoming? Alcorn? And you brought the G-Man in? Okay. All right. Let's see what that looks like. Top 10 matchup, as you think about it, you have number five going on the road as they move up the pole. Ascending at number 10, Alcorn State, one of our first top 10 matchups of the SWAC this weekend. If you're a SWAC fan, HBCU fan, much like I told you about the SIC in terms of what else top rankings, you have three top 10 rankings uh, that you got to see, and they are huge in terms of standing. Charles has led you with one of them. With that being said, Brian, what are your thoughts in terms of the top seven poll rankings? And week number five. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say with full disclosure, and if you listen to Sunday's show, you heard me talk this out live, put it on wax. I did not have Florida A and M University ranked number one, Charles. Just so you know, I did <laughs> but not didn't have, have Central. Either. I did not have North Carolina Central ranked oh. number one. Either. And he said, "Oh, <laughs> I had him." To- uh, that's and- fair. You know, I I just when I when I went and I I told I had to go back and look at the data, and yeah. you know we like to we like to look at the data points, and I and honestly there are very minute differences between just over the course of five games now, not just what they did last week or whatever between A and M Central and Hampton, right? Yeah. But when I looked at it and looked at things such as scoring offense, scoring defense total offense, total defense. And me, I like to kind of look at how those teams have done against the spread. I like to see what teams have done against expectation, right? And it, and it came down to a, a, a Hampton fam you with North Carolina Central just right below. And so I said, you know what? After last week, what I saw, now that, that is when I went to last week. I couldn't reward fam you for being number one after what they did against Valley. Couldn't do it. But Hampton, though, on the road, first game in the CAA. Now, yeah. who knows? You know, people. Some people say Richmond ain't nothing. Okay, well, you know, we'll we'll find out. But I think Hampton <laughs> is a legit. I've seen it. They they yeah. look the part. And yeah. as I, you know, I was talking, I was talking earlier about <clears throat> Davius Richard. Watch out for Chris Zealous. Yeah, Chris Zealous, that name, remember the name, the next yeah. five weeks, if he continues doing what he's doing and Hampton ascends up the rankings or ascends up the uh, standings in the CAA, it'll be because of him. And that is a name that I would hope, even though they're not in an HBCU conference, Hampton is still an HBCU. I would hope that people will consider and think about him and Hampton as we move forward. No point. I think you make a great point, great arguments, both of y'all, in terms of your concerns with fam you doing being ranked. It is a week to week ranking. And so I can see because it's a week to week, if you think a team falls below that and that's how you vote, I don't I, I can certainly understand that. So with that case, uh, I'm not gonna bring the hammer. I think you've made judicial uh comments in regards to that. I will say this. You often see in terms of voters' eyes for those that did vote FAMU um, to rain, remain number one in their rankings. And and somebody obviously dropped Central uh, to, in the space uh, where they even below three mm-hmm. uh, to get that one-point differential for people to understand that, how that all calculates out. Oftentimes you'll see where even a number one team, based on where they start and what people think, um, if you go on the road and you lose a tough game like that, people will be like, hey, that's just conference play. Sometimes you have that. So just to give the other side, I'll share a little bit with that. 